Now stop, just stop before you start. This video is coming from a massive Izzy fan in myself. There was the interview, all right? UFC 259 press conference. Fantastic press. It's going to be a cracker of a card. But what I want to bring to your attention here, just come to, you know, what biases are you bringing? What stories, what arguments? I am a huge Izzy fan, and what I'm going to point out to you today is something that occurred just in a snapshot of a second. A snapshot of a second. That while that press conference was going on, John Jones was mentioned. And the moment John Jones' name was mentioned, Izzy's what we call emotional baseline behaviour, bang, changed. He hadn't done it before, he doesn't do it after. At the moment, there is the thought of Izzy fighting John Jones, his body does something, okay? It does something. And this is what this short video is going to be about. So if you're interested in body language and psychology, maybe just opening your mind instead of shutting it down to think, okay, what is this topic about? Subscribe below, give us a like to help the algorithm, and also leave your comments below. Let me know if there's any other people you'd like me to do body language analysis on. But we've got the press conference here, UFC 259. And what I want to do is point out Izzy's emotional baseline with three examples, okay, of what Izzy usually does when asked a question. What does he usually do when asked a question? All right, this is the interesting part. Three examples. Because when we've got that emotional baseline, if somebody does something all of the time, or if they don't do something all of the time, the moment they do more of it or less of it, bang, at that T junction, at that specific time, what was going on in their brain, which is why we see what we call the nonverbal behavior. The limbic system, the honest part of the brain, all right, the, the honest part of the brain, it's the, the, the prefrontal cortex, that's the part that we can create lies with. The limbic system is an autonomous reaction. It gives us an immediate insight into the thought that's occurring inside our head. So the first example that I'd like to give is when Izzy is asked, you know, you've got the Polish powerhouse in front of you. At any time do you think, you know, what the hell am I doing? What am I getting myself in for? And what you see, and what I want you to notice is the eyes, okay? You notice the eyes, yes, there's a couple of eye blocks, but it doesn't happen at the T-junction. When he's asked about, you know, did you ever think about what the hell am I doing here? He looks confused at the guy who's asked the question. All right, he looks confused. You'll see he sort of tilts his head. And there's that sort of wry smile that we do. And we'll all recognize this when you uh, think as he does it with his left eye. But you see what's called the zygomatic major and the orbicularis oculi, which is the muscles that connect the cheek to the eye. That's the... Uh, that gives us the cock of the head and this stretch here, this sort of wry smile only on one side. He is generally confused at why this person would think you'd be afraid to fight his opponent, even though obviously his opponent is the current champ. So here we've got a confidence level, but look at his eyes. His eyes stay open, maybe a couple of eye blocks, but nothing more. Man, this is a big step up. You know, the, the legendary Polish power, the size. I mean, at any part along the way of prepping here, did you sit back and say, Oh my God, what, what, what have we done here? Have we, have, we, have we bitten off more than we can chew in this one? The second example we've got, and again, it's another confident. He is so confident within himself. This is the baseline that I'm getting at here. When asked about, you know, people are talking as if you are going to transcend the sport, you're going to be, uh, be bigger than Conor McGregor. What you hear is an automatic response. It's inevitable. I love that response, all right? It's inevitable. He is cool with his response. His words are well. He generally believes that it is his destiny to transcend the sport. But again, his eyes don't do too much. I mean, I've, I've heard a lot of people say that you have the ability to transcend the sport, like, like Conor McGregor, you know, just become this massive global superstar, maybe even bigger than MMA. I mean, do you, do you welcome that? Do you see that for yourself? Is that something that you want, a legacy like that? It's inevitable. It's inevitable. But I just have to um, get used to it. Also, again, this is his willingness to fight. The third example that I'm going to show you is when he's talking to the current champion, he said, you know, Izzy's a lot smaller than you. You'll see Izzy lick his lips. That's an animalistic reaction. It's the amygdala. He's getting ready to fight. He's not cowering away. It's like, and what? And what? I'm, I will show you. I'll, t I'll take you on right now. Have a look. Obviously, he's a fantastic striker, but he's moving up quite a bit. And he's going to be a lot smaller than you. Um, do you some? Do you some? Do you some? But again, his eyes didn't do much, all right? So we've got a baseline, maybe it's an eye block here or there, but none at a T-junction. And when this guy asks him about, you know, you might have uh, an interaction with John Jones further down in the future, this is what we see, all right? This is the emotional baseline shift. This is where it changes. 
You can't deny it, all right? Biology doesn't lie. The day, I, I can't make this up. We've had three previous examples of his baseline normal where his eyes don't really do much. As soon as John Jones's name is mentioned, all right, that information hits the thalamus. Because he detects a threat, it goes to the amygdala. The amygdala starts to talk to the hippocampus. The hippocampus brings back any previous thoughts that he's had, short-term, mid-term, long-term memories, some of them from the neocortex. But what we get because of that negative feeling is an elongated eye block followed by another eye block. It's the elongation of that eye block. Now bear with me, oh, body language doesn't mean anything. No, it does, it absolutely does. There's been no elongated eye blocks until this point now. The moment John Jones's name's mentioned, have a look for yourself, you'll see that once his brain's processed it, remember the T-junction, we look at two seconds before, two seconds after. What was said, what does the body do within that time? You'll see the elongated eye block. That is a negative feeling, that is an uncomfortable feeling, that is I don't want to process this. You can't deny it. But it's clear you have John Jones' attention. You know, you've teased, you've teased, you've teased, you've teased. So although, again, to be fair and balanced, we couldn't categorically say he is scared of John Jones. I hope he's not. And I will be supporting, is he in that fight? Okay, so I'm praying that he's not scared. But what it does say, and nobody can deny this from a body language perspective, there is some type of negativity, some type of discomfort there that is non-existent within the rest of the interview before or after but the moment John Jones's name is mentioned boom we have that eye block he's trying to cut out something it could be a feeling it could be a vision it's something undeniably undubitably is causing him discomfort and again you look at John Jones could we not say that would be a reasonable reaction we've got one of if not the greatest of all time who could be in the opposing corner I think it's a great thing that Izzy is aware of the presence, is aware of the threat, because that means he will be firing on all cylinders as well. So again, just a short video just to talk to you, to educate you, to explore some of the things that we tend to just, you know, push to the side, but actually could mean so much if we can dig that little bit deeper from a body language and performance psychology perspective. Please, if you want to find out any more about psychology, body language, and how the two of them lie in any genre, you know, I've been covering Meghan Markle across to the UFC, Take a second to subscribe below to the channel, please. Remember to hit your notification buttons. Give us a like for the algorithm, that would be really appreciated. And also, more important, leave your comments below. I'm really interested in your thoughts. And also, who do you think is going to win? Do you think that might be an issue where Izzy is going up a weight? Do you think actually he's going to handle it fine? He is the taller guy, he has got the bigger reach. It'd be a really interesting dynamic to explore come the main event on well, what it is on Sunday morning here in the UK. And that's where I'll be. You can catch me and the rest of the guys on the True Geordie Show, the knockout, which is on his Twitch channel. So it'll be me, Lawrence, True Geordie, Vidal Riley is going to be there, and Tom as well from MMA On Point. The link is below. Cheers for your time. Hope you've enjoyed it. But more important than any of this, believe in Bruce. Remember to be kind to yourselves and each other.